Perfect. That smells so good. Voila. Yeah. It's awesome. Do you know why the hipster burned his mouth? No. Because he ate pizza before it was cool. <laughs> he ate pizza before it was cool. There's tons of, of great food that's in this region. How lucky are we to have places like this in our community? Right, but they're all different. They're, they're all completely different. Oh, they have jigsaw puzzles of their own ingredients. That's cool. We're at Graffiti, which is a fairly new restaurant to KW, and it's a pretty new concept. Restaurant, cafeteria, market, brewery, coffee roaster. It's a lot going on here. It's also in the Catalyst building, which is the newest like maker space for KW. So lots of exciting stuff. And they have these wicked tables too, so you can place your order, pay your bill, do all kinds of stuff, upload photos. Um, but we're here for the food. Uh, so we're gonna be making some pizza and pasta in the back with a good friend of mine, Brian, who's been working with this group since they started out. And uh, yeah, we're pretty excited to dig into some good food. I haven't chose a puzzle yet, but I think we'll do, um, I thought that was me for a second. We're in the bowels of the Graffiti Market Kitchen, uh, checking things out with Chef Brian. This thing's pretty rad. It's a pasta extruder. They got some really neat toys here at Graffiti and the food's pretty awesome. I'm excited to be here on multiple levels. Uh, hopefully I get to eat a little bit. Uh, this is, uh, these dyes are a pain in the ass to clean. Are they? Yeah. What's takes, this machine like? Like is it? The machine's a beast, yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. But it's easy, like is it user friendly? 100%, yeah. you, just, you just throw your flour in, you throw your eggs in, you throw your water in. That everything makes, right there. Everything. Just, Mixes it for you for about two minutes, two and a half minutes until it looks like sand. Yeah. And then you just extrude. Nice. This thing pops out. Got the fan in, so it dries it as right it comes away. out. Awesome. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll be able to do pasta today because this will probably take me about half an hour <laughs> to clean this. Do you want to make a pasta? Let's make a pasta. Let's make a pasta. Okay. So what are we making today, bro? So we're going to do a non-traditional carbonara. Nice. So it is uh, mushrooms. It's got raw egg, guanciale. Uh, roasted garlic, olive oil, awesome. and a little bit of truffle. Yeah. So render out some of that fat. Awesome. Uh, squish up the roasted garlic. Is this one of the more popular pastas? This is one of the most popular ones, yeah. This one and uh, mom spaghetti. Yeah. So just a basic pomodoro. Nice. You can just tell the quality of those noodles just looking at them. Like yeah. they look awesome. Yeah. Uh, truffle oil, we just finished. Uh, parsley. Our eggs come from around the area, so then the egg just goes on top. Beautiful. And then we have our Parmigiano Reggiano. Beautiful. They're, they're all pretty even, right? Like, but this one and the mom spaghetti are, uh, are up there. But nothing beats our, uh, our pizzas. We go I through about a busy night, about 325 pizzas a night. Seriously? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Uh, produces the dough, yeah. gets it bulk ferment until the guy shows up. I think it's about four hours. And then we portion it out, let it ferment for about another hour or so at room temp, and then it goes into the fridge. Is this the most dreaded station then? This is, I don't know, Dan, would you say this is the most dreaded station? No, no, no. no this is a. <laughs> I think that was, I was a yes, definitely from Dan. It's a, it's a fun <laughs> station. Like I find it when I work over here, I love working over here, that it's, uh, it's just, because you got three of us over yeah. here, you're all feeding off of one another, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's not like you're rolling though. You just right. pull it out, you got to put your toppings on and put it in the oven yeah. and, and that's it. Yeah. It does get hectic over here, obviously, right? It is a Sicilian dough, so it's uh, high in hydration. So 76% or 77%. So the dough is really hard to work with. Yeah. But when they're in these pans, it's easy to work with. And you end up with a more like uh, cake-like product than, than like chewy sort of New York right, style? you do. So you, you get like uh, the kind of like focaccia. So right. it's crispy, it's airy in the middle, yeah. with all the toppings on. It's, it's heavy but light. Yeah. So it's, it's a good balance. Nice. So we do, we do multiple layers of pepperoni. So we do start at the bottom. And people don't understand like there's a lot of toppings that go into all yeah. of these pizzas. And some people say that we're, we're expensive, but when you see the amount of cheese and and love that goes into it, it's actually not that, not that pricey. We right? all fight that battle, right? It's how, do you, how do you tell the customer 
how much effort goes into your plate, right? right. So here we are. Here, here we are. Exactly. Help with that a little bit, True. but like, True. it's a it's the constant struggle of like value, and yeah. telling the story along with the just the obvious value. But yeah, one hundred percent. And then we use brick cheese, uh, so Springbank cheese and Woodstock. It's very similar to cheddar, like a very mild cheddar. Uh, melts very well. A little bit of sharpness. The brick cheese goes along the edge, just so you get that caramelized cheese crust, right? And then it's just a mozzarella. That's a lot of cheese. I know. I, that's yeah, what, that's I, what I'm saying. It's like a half, awesome. a, a half a pound of cheese would go on a small pizza, right, yeah. and then a pound of cheese would go on a large one. Wow. Somebody said somebody roll on that KW Food Group that it's kind of like a lasagna. Like you're, you're yeah. actually getting yeah. like a slice of pizza is like a slice of lasagna. Right. Like it's, it's filling. And I thought that was brilliant. So then we do another layer of pepperoni on top. And the thing with Detroit style pizza, it's it's an upside down pizza. So most pizzas you put your sauce on on the base and then yeah. your cheese and your toppings or whatever. Sauce goes on after. So oven sits about 580, 575. Put a timer on. We're looking at about 13 minutes or so. You don't turn it, there's none of that. Just leave it. Set it, forget yeah. it. Yeah. Awesome. It's oven, direct from Italy. Three deck, uh, fire Ferrari red. That's Liverpool red or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they had in mind when they painted it red. Your love for Liverpool. And then the bottom is uh, for bread. So red circle uh, baking over there, cool. James. All of our sourdoughs and uh, multigrains and all that comes out here. We put it on the grate just so it stays crispy. Yeah. And you put it on doesn't a plate, steam. it doesn't steam yeah. and get all soggy and everything like that, right? And then San Marzano tomato sauce on top. So we actually do use DOP certified San Marzano's. And it's just that and oregano cooked down. That's it. That's it. So that's our Detroit style pizza. Awesome. Should we grab a pint and sit down? Sure, of course, yeah. That's awesome. Oh yeah, look at that cheese, right? <laughs> that was a good <laughs> shot, man. <laughs> Very simple, cheesy, and good. You know what I love about the style of this pizza is that you kind of get the best of both worlds with the cheese. You got like the crispy edges that you associate with pizza, like caramelized brown cheese. Yep. But so much gooey cheese still going on in there right. because of how much you load it up. And even the base still stays crispy, so totally. it's a good vessel for, for yeah. having all that cheese on there, right? Oh, those are awesome. So what can you tell me about working in this in this building? Because this is a pretty unique building to the city, um, being next to so many makers and sort of tech savvy people. Like, what's yeah. it like being here? It's great. Like the amount of uh, people and connections we've met through like MyoVision, uh, Kicks moving in here soon, um, BDC over here. We're basically the cafeteria for them, you know? Yeah. Which is which is great. Yeah. So do they eat here a lot? They eat here a lot. They do drink you like here deliver a lot. to your deliver and to we, them? And we deliver too. Ton, tons of functions out in the communal space. Yeah. Um, sandwich platters, charcuterie platters, cheese, all that jazz. When you guys announced you were coming here, I thought brilliant. You know, access to all these employees every mm -hmm. day, good food. But what I've found every time I've come here is you've got a ton of people coming up from the trail right yeah. here. Like yeah. so many families and you can see them coming because they're pushing a bike or a stroller. Yeah, a stroller and they're sure. just walking up here and you, they're like teeming to the place, whether it's for a scoop of ice cream or to stay for dinner. But for sure, um, you guys are like really connecting to two different awesome avenues of customers between the live-in, you know, working guests and the, the na neighborhoods nearby. It blew me away in the summer, the amount of traffic that came off the Iron Horse Show. Yeah, it's awesome. Where the families of five, you know, with their little yeah. stro stroller attached to the bike coming up. Do you want a money shot of this egg yolk getting popped? Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love that. Pasta. You're a chef that yep. I've been working. We've never worked together. Right. We've both been cooking in the region for 20 some years. We've of grown course. up here. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was a kid, when we were younger, yep. there was like two or three restaurants you'd want to go work at. So you kind of stuck where you were because you were like, right. what better kitchen do I have than this one? Maybe that other kitchen, but pretty limited. Now yep. there's like 20 They're some everywhere. odd places you'd love to work, whether sure. it's here, the rich uncle, like there's so many great places that a young cook could go and learn from great chefs. Yeah. Um, it's changed so much, like, uh, and you've played a role in that, we've all played a role in that, but now we get to sit there and sort of enjoy it and enjoy being part of it. Because again, like putting a raw egg yolk on top of a pasta, you might not have even gotten away with nope. 10 years ago, but now it's like 
people know that they love it, they want it. Of course, so, and I, I, th I, th I think it's great. Like you said, back in the day, there was like Janet Lynn's, Char Two Russo's. Yeah. There was a, a handful of places. Yeah. But now with, uh, with what you're doing, with what Daryl's doing, what Eric's doing at Fork and Cork, Langdon Hall, there's tons of, of great food that's in this region. And yeah. we're surrounded by such beautiful farmland that the ingredients that we do get when it's in season is outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it shows, and it just makes our job easier when we get to work with these totally. amazing ingredients, you know? Totally. How lucky are we to have places like this in our community? Right, but they're all different. Yeah. They're all completely different from totally. like from Taco Farm to Harmony Lunch to Uptown to what we have here and Rich Uncle to what Eric and, and Daryl have. They're mm. all completely different. Yeah. And that's what's great is the variety in this community is that you can go get a taco, you'll get some southern food, some, some smoked meat, some great pizza. You know, it's, it's great. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Cheers to that. Cheers, man. Thanks yeah, for hanging yeah. out with hey. us today, big guy. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah,